Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So yesterday's balance breakdown took us into the 9091 larger time frame support, which was the launching point of a strong directional move that uh, previously took us to new all-time highs. So the market tested larger time frame support yesterday, found buyers. We saw a pretty decent bounce yesterday afternoon back up towards 2108. And in the overnight session, the market has continued to consolidate and balance within a range. Now, the question for today is whether the rejection that we got off of 91 yesterday marks a extreme where the move is now over and perhaps now we're going to go back up. Or is this simply the first swing to the downside and now we can extend the range beyond yesterday's low and fill the gap at 85 half test the naked VPOC at 84 and test the support zone at 80 to 82 half and how the market responds to the 2108 quarter to 10 quarter and 2112 to 13 is really going to help us figure that out because as long as ES holds below 08 quarter to 10 quarter we know that sell side can still technically maintain control and the bearish market structure would remain intact. But if we start taking those zones out on the upside, the 08 quarter to 10 quarter and 12 to 13, uh, then it signals a failed breakdown attempt. And in that case, we can just start balancing again and testing some higher prices, but it would tell us that a larger time frame buyer stepped in at 91, and perhaps now we're just gonna balance within a range, but not necessarily continue that liquidation that kicked off yesterday. So 08 quarter to 10 quarter is very key on the upside and our bias is going to be bearish as long as ES is holding below there. Now on the downside, we have pre-market support 94 half to 96 half. That's where the market balanced and held in the overnight session. It's not really a strong area of support and uh, taking that area out would bring yesterday's low into play. And that brings us to the 89 quarter to 91 quarter support zone. Now, technically, responsive buyers can still defend that area and be active, but we really need to assess the situation in real time to determine whether it's worthwhile to attempt a long at 89 quarter to 91 quarter. In order to put in a continuation move, we will have to see broad market weakness and downside momentum. As long as the market is heading down, on some pretty decent downside momentum with the NYC tick holding below zero, then we could attempt a breakdown and a continuation beyond 89 quarter to 91 quarter and test the gap at 85 half and the naked V pocket 84. And the next decent area of support is at 80 to 82 half. And the expectation is for responsive buyers to be active on first test of 80 to 82 half in the event that we go through that. Same can be applied to 75, 76, 72, 64, 75, and 59 to 62. These are all larger time frame areas of support. And um, given that this morning there aren't really any major economic reports out, we have the Fed announcement out at 1 p.m. Central Time, it's unlikely that we're just going to continue slicing right through some pretty decent areas of support. And that's why on the downside, even 89 quarter, 91 quarter is an area where buyers can defend and be active. And we have to see how the market responds to 89 quarter, 91 quarter. That's a very key area. And if uh, we get a failure at that zone and a rejection back up, then we'll need to be a bit more cautious even on the short side, because from that point on, the market could just establish another trading range at least into the Fed announcement and then perhaps we get some movement after the uh, announcement is out of the way. So uh, right now we are going to give edge to the sell side below 2108 quarter to 10 quarter and 12 to 13 but ideally if this market is indeed as weak as yesterday's move makes it to be then we hold below 08 quarter to 10 quarter and we don't even take that area out because that in itself would be a warning sign and then a break above 12 to 13 would kind of confirm the idea of a failed breakdown from yesterday and then uh, from there we can just continue to balance so it doesn't mean that we have to completely reverse 
but uh, it means that the downside could be done uh, on the larger time frame for a bit. So uh, sell side can still be active at 1775 to 1975 uh, at the 20 half to 21 area with that 2075 high volume node really being key over there and uh, 24 half to 26. But uh, at that point, um, you know, the big downside scenario of a continuation beyond 89 quarter, 91 quarter would be off the table. So uh, that's really what we're trying to determine right now is whether yesterday's breakdown is going to result in continuation into the 80 to 82 half zone, possibly lower, or does yesterday's test of larger time frame support and the rejection that we've seen off of 91 mark the end of the downside, at least in the short term, and now we just continue to balance within a range yet again. So uh, by default, we are going to give edge to the sell side, and we're going to have to see some signs in real time to tell us that buyers are really stepping in in a bigger way. And uh, the most clear signal is going to be a upward trending advanced decline line and the NYC tick uh, skewed uh, to above zero. So if the tick is holding above zero, that means that there is sustained upside momentum. And in order to continue going down, we need to see the complete opposite. We need to see sustained downside momentum. So if tick is holding above zero, then it tells you that buyers are uh, fairly aggressive and active here. And, um, you know, that means that we could just establish another trading range and we'll have to be very mindful of trade location if we are fading the immediate and real-time momentum uh, that could be visible on the NYC tick. So that's the market scenario heading into the open. Let's see how ES responds to the previous close, 0375, the previous VPOC of 2106, and more importantly, 08 quarter, 10 quarter. That's really going to be key on the upside. Uh, let's see if we do see broad market weakness. Now, with the previous close at 2103.75, if the market opens right around there, the advanced decline line does not necessarily have to be very bearish. So we're going to have to look at the trend on the AD. But in the event that uh, the AD line is much more bearish than expected, then that would confirm the downside scenario as well. And we could go back down and at least test 89 quarter to 91 quarter. And then if we are seeing sustained downside momentum, then perhaps we have to go into 80 to 82 half to find buyers but uh, responsive buyers can be active at those uh, support zones below. And then we can get a move right back up into uh, 89 quarter, 91 quarter, and even 94 half, 96 half, and beyond. So those are our main thoughts. Let's see which side is more aggressive here off the open. Let's see if the bearish bias from yesterday can follow through, and we'll take it from there.